Oh my peoples, what's up? Welcome to Semper Ludimus, the last vi uh, video we have. We had five videos in our top 50-50 uh, for Semper Ludimus, our celebration of our favorite games. Uh, this is Jason from Shelf Stories. I'm Liz from Beyond Solitaire. And we are here to finish off this project. We are finishing off. Um, I, I think all these videos are going to come into the Summer Spectacular. It's a lot of videos, so I don't know if <laughs> this one with this one might get lift off either that one or or afterwards. Uh, but uh, you know, Summer Spectacular. It's going to be summertime sometime. So enjoy. Hopefully, everybody's enjoying their summer. Uh, this was a stretch goal from the Dice Tower, so we are finally finishing our obligation on that one. But not really an obligation. We like this, right, Liz? Oh, yeah. I mean, it's fun to talk about games. It's fun to talk about games with you. So it's good. <laughs> it's fun to hang out at 730 in the morning because we're both uh, early worms. You're an early worm just by choice. I'm an early worm by circumstance. <laughs> <laughs> by two-year-old circumstance. <laughs> yeah, my natural wake-up time. So my alarm during the week during the year is set for about 430. And then I'm naturally around by 530. Great. So, <laughs> and, and I'm like, oh, my God, my kid is waking up. I might as well record with Liz. <laughs> <laughs> Here you go, honey. <laughs> Take care of the kid. I'm going downstairs. Uh, okay, so we're just doing, yeah, 10 to 1. Uh, and this is, uh, I, there's going to be, we have, we've already, our first set of videos, the first three, not a lot of crossover. But now we're starting to get a little bit of crossover. Now you're going to see where Liz and I really come together. And I have a feeling that there's going to be at least uh, three. Uh, uh, two? I don't know, man. Well, actually, okay. So not that, we're not going to There's going to be at least two. Here. It's gonna be at least two, um, but there's but a couple games that appeared earlier on your list. Uh, okay, that, all right, all right. Okay, so there'll be more then, because I'm looking for mine. It's like right. space. And it's like how many? <laughs> <laughs> all right, so let's get to number ten. Uh, X number X number X. Marks X. Spot. Yes. So my number ten is. It's it just speaks to my heart as somebody who loves Roman history, and my uh, my number ten Let me is guess, Carthage. So... No. <laughs> Oh, oh, don't, why would you profane this video with the, the mention of that game? Like, my God. Okay, so y'all, do you want to have tea time before I get in the top 10? Because we're going to have to do it now. So there's a, there's like a deck building game called Carthage. You're glad you're running around in the arena. You play cards to move, which, and you play cards to hit people. There was a- I don't think we need to talk about that game. <laughs> based on an app. And one of Jason's and my early Bonnie experiences was me meeting him over Skype and us attempting to make that work. And it didn't. But our friendship did. Yes, <laughs> yes. <laughs> we have Bonnie. No, my number 10 is Stilico, Last of the Romans. It's from Hollandspiel. It's designed by Robert Zaleski. And it is just about being Stilico. He's a great general. He worked for the Emperor Honorius. And he eventually got his head cut off by about turn three in the actual game. And you're trying to see if you can do better than him. Mm. Managing multiple uprisings and a, a pretender to the throne. And this guy back in Rome who thinks that you suck and like puts a bunch of poison in the well about you. And, you know, there's just all kinds of like stuff that you have to balance. And, you know, I know that um, war games aren't for everybody, but this one is fairly simple. It's very card driven. Um, you know, you're looking to play cards to either do actions or play the event of the cards. You have to decide what you're going to do with your hand, which I, I love as a thing. And this is also, um, it's an improvement on the Wars of Marcus Aurelius system, which is a game I already really loved. And I think still because just at that bit smoother. Mm. I like both still, I have both. And, you know, if you just want to like sit around and think about how tough it would have been to be a Roman person in charge, uh, Silico is a good one. And I just, I pull it out all the time. It's like a comfort game at this point. Yeah, I got nothing. Like you was talking, Noko. <laughs> yeah, <laughs> me with whatever that word is, silico or whatever it is. <laughs> uh, you, this game that uh, my number ten appeared on your list earlier, Terraforming Mars. Uh, Terraforming Mars is. It's it's amazing. I, I think it's amazing. I I know like people think it's overhyped and you know they they, they kind of don't get it. And it's like I don't know. I, if you like card play, has your card play. Uh, I like the theme. I like the I like the what the what Mars looks like after the game. You know, and I it makes sense to me. It makes sense. You know, uh, the, I can see. You know, you're you're doing the tracks like you know you're heating up the planet, and at some point the glacier explodes, and you know you get a, you get a, a, an ocean out of it. That makes sense to me. You know, and I like seeing the nine oceans and I like seeing the the trees, you know, the, the floor and all that kind of stuff. And, you know, the um, it's one of those games that I don't like, 
I don't think there's a really great expansion for it. Like I think Colonies is probably um, the best expansion. Prelude is, I don't count that as a, like a real, and that's more like a fix. <laughs> it's like, here you go. Prelude was like, okay, you know, get started earlier. Uh, and that's, that's, that's more like a fix than an actual like kind of module. Um, so yeah, I just play like basic, you know, Terraforming Mars. Uh, when I first got it, I played every single corporation. I beat this. I wanted to beat the solo with every corporation. Some of them are better than others. So some of the, some of the corporations have nothing to do with solo, like the city one. <laughs> You don't, you don't play cities and solo. Uh, and then I, I was done. I, I still have it. It's, 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 it's here. Is it here? It's over there. Uh, <laughs> don't look at my basement, people. Um, but then the app came out and it's become one of my comfort food apps. Like I have a very small cluster. Like I have a lot of purchased apps, but I, uh, a lot of them kind of drop off and there's a small cluster that are like, I'm just going to keep on going back to it again and again. Yeah. when I want it like a quick experience. Terraform Mars is one of them. So, I mean, it's amazing. And I'm not quite sure, like, I, I think I compare it to uh, Through the Ages. I'm not quite sure why this one's high, so much higher. Like, not 10 is really high. Uh, I guess it's just because I've played it so much more, you know? Yeah. I think that, like, having a game, you have a relationship with the game as well yeah. as just whether you enjoy the gameplay or not, and it matters. Yeah, I have a relationship with Terraform Mars at this point. Like, <laughs> <laughs> I think it's cool. I, I think the uh, the concept of like molding Mars into something is really cool. Awesome. All right. So my number nine is also probably not your cup of tea, but it's definitely mine. Um, it is Pavlov's House. It is one of the Valiant Defense games. Uh, I've actually from, heard of that one though. <laughs> yeah, that? it's from David Thompson. Right. It's published by Dan Person Games, and I just really like it. I I enjoy this game because it's a it's a story every time. It's about defending a besieged apartment building in the Battle of Stalingrad, um, and you are you basically have. The, a three phase turn. There's one phase where you're trying to do operational support from basically the other side of the river. And so you're trying to keep your communications open and get supplies to the guys in the apartment building. Then the Germans go and mess with you. And then you have the apartment building itself where you have to distribute your energies between um, you know, dealing with the encroaching soldiers, making sure everybody has something to eat, putting people in positions that make sense um, inside of the building as it continues to crumble. There's a lot of die rolling. There's a lot of drama. It's very difficult to win. And I like it like that. It's just really good. You know, uh, David Thompson has done other games in this series. Some people might prefer Castle Itter, which is another um, solo uh, Valiant Defense game where you are in like a really strange battle where it's like a combination of you know, um, some like a, there's like a French tennis player and there's a former SS officer. There's Americans. They're all fighting against, you know, the the Germans for one last big stand. It's more mm -hmm. tactical, um, but I like the operational aspect of Pavlov's house still. And so, I really like it. If you want to try a war game that's dramatic and exciting and not too hard to learn, it's a good one. Mm -hmm. Okay. Uh. <laughs> <laughs> I'm sorry, Dave. David Thompson's a really nice guy. He's always con he contacts me. He's like, he li I've watched my show. I'm, you know, inspired my stuff. And I'm like, I feel so bad. Besides, like, undaunted. <laughs> at some point, <laughs> at some point, maybe. Uh, you I are missing need, out. I, I need the That's right what I'll tell you. That's what you're missing out. <laughs> uh, okay, so my number nine is, I feel like an evolution of Terraform Mars, and I feel like it's a better overall game. Uh, it is Underwater Cities. Uh, underwater cities is everything that terraforming Mars is um, more. Uh, there's a worker. It, it's it, you know multi-use cards and like you know combo uh, com combo chaining cards and building your empire. Um, but there's another level of worker placement. There's just another level of progression along the game. So like you can get you know um, your your city is going to grow and grow because uh, you have this like little city you're kind of like laying out stuff and like you may lay your little dome your little rods and everything up uh, so you get that sense of growth the same thing that you get in terraforming mars but just you know it, it plays out differently it plays out uh, i think a little bit more um it's abstract but i just i feel a little bit more invested in the city that i'm building because it's mine uh as opposed to kind of like being on a shared uh, board and the card play you know and i it's not a game i own um i want to <laughs> <laughs> I want, like it's one of those like you know whenever I, if a trade comes up and it's advantageous like boom there I, i'm finally gonna get underwater cities in my life i have to be really careful because there's a, a previous edition uh from i think it was like the german printing was just like really janky like you know they didn't have like very low production and then like it, i'm looking for like a, a making sure i have the, the new edition which is really good um so yeah no underwater cities is fantastic and it's another one of those games where if they if 
like if there was an app, I'd be playing it forever. Uh, so, you know, and I, and I know like it's weird to talk about because I, I know we're going to get comments about that, about like if it's an app game and if it's on the list of, you know, because an app doesn't count. Um, the shot, it's, it's, it's part of my gaming diet. It's part of my board gaming diet. And we explained it before. It's like, you know, you learn the game and we play the game and we're happy to play the game. It's not like we're going to, it's not like we prefer the yeah. game to the app. It just fills in when we can't play the game. So it just, it's part of the complimentary experience. So no, but, but that, but I think that Underwater yeah, Saints is mean, available honestly, on some, it's not available on some like, you know, um, like board game arena. It's not a board game arena, but it's like one of those type sites. So if I wanted to, I could play it and like Tabletopia right, like table or something. Mm-hmm. Uh, but yeah. yeah, no, Underwater Cities is amazing. Oh my God, card play. I love card play. And I think it's the best combo, I really combo generating card play that I played. Awesome. Super awesome. Yeah, I've, I've not played it, want to. Mm-hmm. Looking for my opportunity. You know how it so goes. So many. We got to make that list, Liz. We got to make that list of like games. There's just so many games. <laughs> games that we play. Uh, God, like there's so many games. games that like... Yes. Well, it's the other thing that makes um, these lists hard, right? It's like, I haven't played every game, or even if I've played a game that's great, I might not have played it enough to feel like comfortable putting it anywhere or reviewing it or anything. And, you know, that's just how it is. And we, we are spoiled for choice. It's a beautiful thing, actually. Beautiful thing. But um, my number eight, I sing the praises of this game every time. I will until everyone tries it. It is Thunderbolt Apache Leader. That game is awesome. It's right. about being a helicopter pilot and you just go around and bomb stuff which sounds terrible but like it's great um so basically uh you are it's it's a dan versus game again i really apparently like these solo only you know like little war games but basically instead of just like doing one-off missions you have this campaign it can be as long or short as you want there's like some different options for that but um you pick these pilots you develop them over time so they gain experience they gain trauma their planes get damaged so you have to like allocate resources to repair them you can lose people in flight and like have to try to go find them and the thing that tickles me is i get really attached to these pilots but they're actually all the same looking guy with like a dad bod and they all have names like daddy or like pirate and <laughs> I, I imagine them playing a lot of volleyball or something <laughs> <laughs> but you know at the same time it's like you get so attached to them because you put so much investment into helping them grow over the course of like mission after mission after mission that you get really upset when something happens and so i love the point allocation aspect where you're trying to figure out like okay how do i want to outfit myself what weapons do i want what aircraft do i want you know do i want to run this green horn pilot who doesn't know what he's doing or do i want to risk my veteran again even though he's like not feeling so hot right now what do i do all of that is just so immersive for me i just i really get a huge kick out of it every time i like that game a lot so um liz and i and a couple with a couple (laughs) other people we do we mentioned the one player goal a lot and we've mentioned the one player um the top 100 people's choice for solo games uh that they do every single year kevin erskine is is a good friend of ours at this point and on shelf stories on and on my old podcast, we do we would do commentary episodes. So that's kind of like a running commentary of all these things. And then every year that I have Liz on, no matter where Thunderbolt Apache leader is, the, no matter what we're talking about, Liz will find a way to spend ten minutes talking about Thunderbolt Apache leader, which has not been expanded, which has not been re released, which is the same game over. Yes, and over it has. Again. There was an expansion in the past year. What you don't know what you're talking about, <laughs> sir. Also, now we were talking about the list. Because Kevin agrees. <laughs> <laughs> There's some things where it's like the conversation just naturally turns back to, oh, we're talking about Thunderbolt the Patch Leader again? How'd that happen? <laughs> <laughs> Kevin is my ally in this. <laughs> it's true. It's true. I did it. I did he it. I appreciate the glory that is this game. <laughs> Another one of those games. I, I, I hesitate to even say put it on the list, but like of all the war games. Uh, that you've mentioned that's probably the one that i would be most curious about because of the layer of investment you know the the uh, development of the character over multiple uh campaigns that one it's that one sticks out to me as something i would like all right uh so my number eight yeah uh, my number eight uh we're going again uh, back to the cooperative space uh, I, I went to the strategy space for a couple of turns uh don't worry people back to co-ops uh this one is ghost stories <laughs> so Ghost Stories is a famously difficult one to four player cooperative game uh, where you are a Taoist monk and you are in a village and the village is made up of nine tiles. 
Uh, and on the outsides of those tiles, on all four sides, ghosts are invading. You know, uh, one per turn. Uh, you're going to flip over a card, and then ghosts are going to uh, get, somehow do something. <laughs> they, they have all sorts of inventive ways to kind of mess with you, mess with your village. Uh, you know, you can haunt the tiles. So, like, some of the ghosts are, like, minis. They can kind of, like, you know, progress forward. Some of them, you know, inhibit your powers, like the really nasty black ones inhibit your powers. Some of them summon other ghosts. So there's a lot of variability in the enemies that, you, that are coming towards the city. Uh, but you have resources to combat them you get uh you know power tokens which are color coded so like you get your you can trigger your own personal power you can you know increase your movement you can use the villages the village tiles you have that uh for you it's famously hard i personally i personally believe people think it's hard because they don't know how to play uh and it, <laughs> uh they you know the, the positioning people don't really get the positioning or people don't get the um, you know, the, the the fact that, okay, I'm going to go roll against this thing. How many resources do you have? Not many. So why are you rolling? Just let them go and go get resources so that you can fight them later. Uh, and so it's one of those games that challenges you to not just react. Like you have to invest in pre pre preparation, even if it's painful, in order to be able to beat Ghost later. Uh, so I have a I have okay time with it. My win rate is okay. Uh, at all the different player counts, like I'll either play with the four characters or I'll play with one character with the special rules. Thematic is all get out. I mean, I, I to me, I, I I have the the last dragon with Bruce Lee were playing in that in my head the entire time. <laughs> I think I sang multiple songs <laughs> when I did a playthrough for it in once co-op shop. I sang uh, the different things, sounds uh, off the soundtrack of that old movie. Uh, man, no, it's probably, it, I don't know if it'd be that that high if it wasn't for that, my nostalgia for, you know, the Bruce Lee type movies and uh, ancient <laughs> uh, martial arts. So no, but Ghost Stories is a, a fabulous game. Reiterated with the game called Last Bastion. You haven't heard about it. There's a reason for that. It's why are you going to reiterate if you're not really going to improve on this scenario? And it doesn't really improve on the core Ghost Stories. Ghost Stories is fine. It just, just bond itself. You, I, I know yeah. you've played Ghost Stories. You have to have played Ghost Stories. Yeah, yeah, I've played ghost stories. <laughs> it's fine. Look. <laughs> Whatever. Oh, but I don't have the same nostalgic attachment to it. Right. So it's just it's just, it's just a different vibe for me. Absolutely. But uh my number seven is a, a love we share. And this number seven is where I have Sentinels and Multiverse. I just love that mm. game. I have everything for that game, including the giant playmat. I like to play it myself. I like to teach it to other people because even though there's a lot to keep track of, like the turn structure is so simple. Mm -hmm. that anybody could really play it with you and i just I if you take it. the tracking I out for people the they'll enjoy it yeah yeah but i mean i handle the tracking if people need it when we play so sure. <laughs> but uh i um i love to play the app i love to play it myself i love to play with other people um i've had great memories on game night of this game i bought everything for this game i backed the new version of this game like obviously i really freaking love sentinels of the multiverse and it's just still the one for me and like i say that you know i like marvel champions a lot i really do i'm very um i'm very curious about our need coming up and you know i like superhero stuff in general but sentinels is still the one for me it's the one at this time mm -hmm. just where i'm at yeah no i we i said what i had to say about sentinels uh that is your number seven so very good yeah love uh, it okay so my number seven you played you thought it was okay um i still play to this day uh it is my highest filler uh solo filler okay. uh <laughs> you don't know what it is do you okay you don't know what it is i'm waiting <laughs> no you can get <laughs> At this point, we can, I don't remember. We can, guess, we can guess the different things on our list. I think I can guess your next, like, I can guess at least five of your next seven. So anyway, um, depending on how you introduce it. So anyway, so um, this one is, like I said, uh, my, my smallest game that I play over and over again. I have it next to my bed. If I want to just play it, bang out a quick game, I'm going to do it. Uh, it is a game that you've probably never heard of, people. So this game is Mageling. So Mageling is a card and dice game, very simple. Um, well, like simple as concept, it's a very, very small box. And you are, it, it, like the theme is like, you're, you're like, you're a magician, you're a mageling and you are traveling across uh, the land to try to like, you know, you're trying to, you start off at this like low power point, but then you're traveling from place to place. You have to overcome the obstacles. So then you're rolling your dice and you're gathering cards. So, you know, you have to, you have, there's a market, you have to buy the cards with the, with the energy that you generate. And as you buy the cards and fill your tableau, you'll be able to program the dice and accomplish 
you know, like powers that the cards give you. So then at the beginning, you don't have a lot to accomplish, just kind of like, you know, gathering resources. But by the mid game, you're going to have enough cards to like assign your five dice and like make something happen on your tableau. This, you know, you, you, you assign your dice here, it triggers this card. You, this chart, when you, this card triggers, triggers that card. And you get these cascade effects. And I, that's what I love. I love create. I love that when you can create a cascade effect. Um, one deck dungeon is a is an analog game. So people know one deck dungeon. You start small, but then as you get more powers, you can trigger this and trigger this and trigger this, and then like accomplish a lot. Um, I just prefer this one. I think it's cleaner. I think it's kind of mathematically very solid. I rarely have games that feel just completely wonky and I can't do anything. One deck dungeon does that because sometimes one deck dungeon you can't physically do the, the, the layout in front of you. You're a strength character and it's all uh, agility <laughs> in front of you. In this game, I just feel like the way it was constructed, I don't run into that problem. It's just every, everything, the cards generally come out and they're clean and I can do what I can do what I need to do. I, I get enough to accomplish a thing. And sometimes it comes together where it's like, I'm accomplishing huge things and I can just blow through. And that's really satisfying too. Um, Mageling just, it's a small game, small publisher. You probably can't get it. I'm very blessed to have had it in my life. It's one of those things I was just very lucky to find it. And it's my number one filler. It's my go-to filler. I love it. Awesome. Yeah. I did not like the game as much as you, but... Um, but we have, it's what, what we're all know. about. It's what we're all about. Yeah, but I mean, I totally respect... Like, it has a lot of charm. And I think it uh, sending it to you is a good idea. <laughs> it's it's, it's no made need. for you. No like, need. Uh, 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 you don't need to send this to me. I, 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 this one, mine is uh, going to be around forever. No, no, no. I mean, like you getting it, it, it coming in your hands is like, you know, every game needs its advocate and like the person yep. it's a match for. And that's majorly that yep, in you. It works out. So my number six, now we're getting into the, some serious contenders, at least for me. Um, so number six is a lot of people's number one, but please. It's, uh, it's still amazing though. It's Spirit Island. <laughs> <laughs> number six wow number six yeah i mean okay so spirit island is great it's a wonderful game there are other games that i prefer to play but i i really 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 like spirit island and it's so if you've not played it do know it's got a little bit of a learning curve i don't think it's because the game itself is that difficult it's because the rhythm of the game is hard like you um you are playing these spirits who are defending an island from colonizers uh sometimes very specific ones depending on what scenario you're playing and they come onto the island and you have to get rid of them the wind conditions change depending on how much you can scare them so fear is a component of the game mm -hmm. but you're also just positioning yourself spreading your influence around the map of your island you get stronger as the game goes by you build a better hand of cards um and you know the, it's a, it's about anticipating you know okay there are explorers here i know that they're going to do x thing next turn do i worry about you know shoring things up here am i anticipating something happening in another part of the board and you know figuring out how to hold it all in your head can be a little bit difficult at first i think but after that's a really satisfying game it's a cooperative game so you work with your friends and or you know or just yourself which is my usual but <laughs> but um you know it's a really excellent game a lot of variety among the spirits um i definitely do recommend it really really good i'm just bitter because uh, the people's choice top 100 has been putting this at number one and i disagree about number one. <laughs> number other one than that it's great. <laughs> <laughs> I may have some things to say about Street Island a little bit, uh, so we're going to hold off on that. Uh, mine number six <laughs> is Sleeping Gods. Uh, brand new hotness. Ooh, I, uh, still, so I need to play that. Yep, you need to play it. The best narrative game I've, 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 I've played. Uh, not just because of like it, the quality really? of the writing or the quality of the exposition or whatever it is. Uh, just the, I feel like, you know, because um, Ryan Lockett, Red Light Raven Games, had a couple of passes at it. Above and below, near and far, um, you know this is this game isn't in that line, but just uh, a couple of passes at how to integrate Euro mechanisms with exploration and storytelling, and when and pacing, I think that's what makes this game uh, stand out for me. Uh, it's big, right? Do you want to make Skyrim yeah. the board game? I, don't make Skyrim the board game. <laughs> you know, like that's not a one to one translation, but it's big, and there's a lot of places to explore. And the pacing of the exploration, you go here, you do a thing, you have an adventure. You go here, you do a thing, you get a com you get into a combat. And the combats are very kind of mathematical, Yuri, but the, you know, you don't want you don't want a, a complicated uh, combat system. 
right? It's just, you know, <clears throat> like a little bit of a puzzly thing. So then the pacing of the story and how it unfolds and how you learn about yourself and you have these characters uh, and what pe some people think people complain about is like, it's a huge table presence and you have tons and tons of characters uh, and you kind of have to keep track of them all because you have to take advantage of all their powers in order to be able to do your thing. Uh, so it's a, it could be a lot, but I don't care. It's depth and the world that unfolds for me, the relaxation, the flow, I think I get a better sense of narrative flow. And what I mean by flow is like time disappears. Like I am not playing a game. I'm in, I'm in, I'm in as much as I, as much as a board game can do that. Right. I played many yeah. video games that do it a little bit better in terms of that immersion, but like in terms of board game that yeah. tickles my tactile, my, my puzzle solving and just wants to immerse me. It's the best because of its size its scope and it's pacing. And it's That's just, awesome. it's just, everything comes together for me. Sleeping Gods, I haven't even finished. Like, I, I'm still like kind of, I, I have, it's one of those games that's like, you lay it out and I'll, I'll get to it when I get to it. It's like, man, that table needs to be used. <laughs> <laughs> Never. <laughs> um, I, haven't, I haven't finished my first adventure, but like, just, re, you know, like where it's going and like, I've seen playthroughs, like I'll, I'll watch vicariously through other people, especially when I was waiting for it. So, oh, it's fantastic. Number six. Excellent. That's a good choice. I'm, I'm, I'm really excited to play it. I have it. I just need to find that time. Yeah. Because I think it's going to really eat me up for a couple of weeks, at least, of just playing it a lot. Absolutely. Yep. Yeah. Oh, yeah. At least. Yep. All right. So my number five, uh, it is a deck builder. It is... Aeon's End. It is not. Uh, it is a what? game that no, I... Um, no! You don't! <laughs> it, is, it is a game that I, um, I actually what? bought everything for this game. I absolutely love it at both player counts. Uh, I know that a lot of people don't like to just play against a random deck for solo, but I also sort of feel like this is America's game. It's Baseball Highlights 2045. Okay, okay, I, okay. right, right. Okay. I, I would love for Phil Millman to come just right. beat me at this game just so I could play it again. I love I love Baseball Highlights. It's mm. a great it's a great game. If you haven't played it before, you're basically starting with a starter team in a world where baseball has like gotten boring for people, but how I love baseball. Um, <laughs> Not but, this you know, year, baseball is this year, please. How many strikeouts can you watch in, a, in one game, please? But things are getting exciting now because there's no more sticky stuff on the balls. <laughs> so now you get to watch people get mad about getting checked. I mean, this is drama-rama right here. Oh but, yeah, I want to watch like the, the umpire get like, go out to the, the pitcher three different times to check the balls. Like That actually has, well, I mean, if you're going to get us, a strip tease out of it. I mean, <laughs> did you see that? <laughs> One of the athletics like took his pants. <laughs> but, uh, <laughs> baseball highlights, 2045. So, and baseball highlights, this is a world where you're playing as robots. You're playing against people who have had like bionic adjustments made to their arm, like pitchers with a robot arm. And you know, they, you also have naturals who are trying to play against all of this. And you're building this team. And you know, it's instead of being like baseball where you have innings like it's like everything's happening at once it's super wild you know the ai uh some people complain about the solo version because you basically just mix a deck and it can be a little bit random i find that it's still really hard actually because you're playing weaker players against just really really good cards um i will also occasionally like build a team and then like make my own thing out of it because i just like the game that much i like a two player um you know even my boyfriend likes it because he also likes baseball <laughs> so you know it's just it's a great game it really is football highlights is good it's just not as good as this right. i really like baseball highlights. Right? i have alluded a number of times to a game the the game that we need to play first when we get together for semper ludimus con right here baseball i have not highlights? Played, i have not played this oh yes yes you can, the, i have all the, the first, starting teams you can be you can be I, anybody you want I want to play this. I really do. It yeah. sounds like a lot of fun. It sounds like a, a, the game that I need to play because not that I'm necessarily a baseball guy, especially modern baseball. I Get off my lawn. I want base running and I want all this stuff. Anyway, because uh, I used to love baseball. Um, but yeah, no, it sounds like uh, the, the perfect game for me. I really I really want to play it. Yeah, you'll like it. I have complete right. faith. Uh, so uh, Spirit Island was my game where you disappointed me and put it a little bit lower than I wanted you to. Uh, this is this is the game that where I'll disappoint you. Uh, Mage Knight. So Mage Knight is... Uh, I mean, number... we already know that I have better taste, so... Yeah. <laughs> uh, Mage Knight, you know, um, the, solo the, the solo delight, right? I mean, it was the number one game on uh, the, the one player go for many, many years, uh, dethroned by Steven Island. Um, Mage Knight is... You know what? I'm not going to say... Uh, it's weird because I know you're going to... I know it's going to be hard for you. 
Uh, so I don't know how much to say. Um, I, you know what? I'll just I'll I'll give the the basic basics. So then you are a character and you are just roaming the land, right? And it's you have one, you start on one hex and you slowly uh, evolve the land, right? And it's it's actually kind of out in a cone, so to speak. Um, so that's kind of not the draw though. Like the draw is not the exploration. The draw is your construction of your character because you're gonna get minions. You're gonna get you're gonna get improved cards. And the cards are all multi-use. So like you can either use the card to whatever it says to move or attack, or you can use it kind of face down for like to fill in your and buff the other thing that you're gonna do. So there's the multi-use aspect and a little bit of a deck build, a little bit deck building-ish aspect because you're gonna get improved cards in your hand. Uh, and it is the the good part is the puzzle to payoff ratio. You're gonna you're gonna uh, you're gonna come to situations whether it's conquering the city, which is the usual base thing, or like just accomplish it. You, you want to like, you're, you're not where you want to be. And you need to, like, need to like move a whole bunch and like conquer a thing before you get to the next round. Um, the puzzle, the 30 minutes that I've spent, 30 minutes, a lot of time. <laughs> <laughs> but then it's rewarded, the payoff after, cause you'll figure it out. It's like, oh, I can do this. And then if I untap this, and if I use this, I untap this, and if I use this again, I've, I've had times where it's like, I've used the same power three times because like use it, untap it, use it. And like figuring all that out is majestic. This is my 9.5 territory, by the way. Sleeping God was also 9.5. Um, everything else was a nine before it. So then the only reason it's not a 10, and it should be, kind it kind of should be, is that for me, the world is a little bit too inert the scenarios are, there's only, there's not even a, too many scenarios to it. Um, you know, you have like an expansion as like the Volcare, which is like a moving a bad guy. Yep. But it's basically a moving city. It's like, it's not, doesn't really do much for me. I just don't find the story of the game that enrapturing interesting. I don't find the world that interesting, but that's not why a lot of people play it. That's not why you play it. So no. it's, it's like just, a fantasy hero, you know? <laughs> fantasy hero, yeah. Fantasy. <laughs> Having said that, 9.5, rank number five, Mage Knight, up at the Ultimate Edition. Awesome. It is so good. So we'll get to you. <laughs> <laughs> let's, but, get to, uh, let's get to number four. Yeah, so my number four is my other deck builder that I love. This one's Aeon's End. So yeah. I really like Aeon's End. It's a cooperative deck builder. Um, the idea is that you're all fighting against the big boss. So it's got kind of that same feel that you're working together as Sintel as a multiverse, except that you're building your deck instead of playing you know, pre-made. Um, you know, there's so much variety at this point among the different mages that you can play. And, you know, you can have a bunch of different bosses that have really interesting challenges. There's a legacy version, which I actually did not like as much. Um, interesting. I prefer to just throw in, like, I like to, you know, I, I don't, for me, it was, you know, I, I like to pick my mages, my breach mages, pick my, you know, my, my boss and just go to town. Mm -hmm. So, you know, but this is a really good game for groups. It's a good game for just you. Um, I really love the variety of it. They've been, there's almost too much variety at this point. There's just so many options and so many boxes, um, but it is just really, really good. And it's got the really interesting um, innovation in deck building of you don't shuffle your deck. Mm -hmm. So you have to think about where you discard things and in what order you discard them in order to uh, to make the most out of the combos that you can purchase. And I really like thinking about like what's rolling around. Is my deck tight? Are things that come around the way I want them to? So I, I love that. It's in my kind of 60s around there. Still a, still a great game. Uh, I didn't like Legacy for the story and I didn't like Legacy because um, you start like weenie and because they mm -hmm. kind of start you at a weenie point and then you have to get it takes you a while to get to feeling like yeah. really on zen what i did like and they put this in the new age expansion i think new age expansion is the one you want to start with uh they give you that expedition mode where it's like you got to play a couple of games in a row and the reason that's good is because you can kind of mold your character to the tableau that yeah. is a bit, the market or the market uh and so you can really get powerful and pull off really amazing stuff because you know now you've gotten to know your character and your character has unlocked certain things and you can really set that and like evolve it over a couple of games and feel a real payoff. So that, yeah. I think that's kind of the, my optimal way to play Aeon Zen. Nice. Yeah, I'm not in it for the story. Let's put it that way. But I am. <laughs> Neither is the designer. Designer could not care less. It's a, it's a hilarious <laughs> thing. That's all, it's all publisher end. You know, they, they put in this, they layer the story on top of like the, the mechanical yeah. experience. Like the, the designer's like, I just want to play a cool deck building game and like, you know, blast things. <laughs> yep, that's where I'm at. <laughs> we're, yeah. we're in agreement. 
but it's so <laughs> fun to to blast things with this deck builder. So that's why it's my number four. <laughs> yeah, number four, yeah, I'm done. Uh, my number four has been sitting and haunting you from the side. It is Eldritch Horror. Uh, Eldritch Horror. Uh, it is the you know uh, the follow up, the spiritual successor to Arkham Horror. So they they kind of split that off, right? Um, so big adventure game. Um, what I like about Eldritch Horror is that it doesn't feel like Arkham. I'm not an Arkham guy, I'm not a Cthulhu guy. I, it, it's whatever. And especially the fantasy version, I feel like it's very just kind of cartoony. And you know, they, they've turned it into something that's different than the original uh, source material. However, Eldritch Horror, I don't come there for that. I feel like Eldritch Horror is much more like Indiana Jones. Uh, where it's just world spanning adventure. You're going into tombs and ruins and different cities and have, you know, escaping, you know, this person, that person. I, it, it is Indiana Jones, the board game to me, and I love Indiana Jones. Uh, and so, like, you see, I have two boxes over here. I have every expansion for it. I have the, the, the small expansions with add cards and add just variety to your experience. I have the, the, the big expansions for like bigger adventures. They have sideboards, Egypt and Antarctica and the, these different places. And just, I, I mean, I try to play like at least once a year, just kind of like get back in this world and have like a big romping adventure. Um, yeah, I, I and yeah, it, it's lucky, lots of dice. I think there's, I, I, I've, it is frustrating to play a very long game like that and lose to luck. I, I, I that is a, that is a definite thing. It's such a immersive adventure that I don't really care. And I think that they, that the game does give you enough in that old school way of just like, you know, pile on the dice and do, and do the best you can. And, you know, I'm not gonna be saying that, you know, I'm not above, like I play it solo and if a roll doesn't quite go my way. <laughs> no I one's watching. No I didn't one see did. it. <laughs> <laughs> I don't do that, that that too often, but if I'm really into this story and I really wanna that kind of follow through the end, it's like, oh, you know. <laughs> Fair enough. <laughs> <laughs> so not too often, Eldritch, people, not too often. I think I'd like this one better with other people actually. Because there's something about it, like, you know, it's it's not gamey enough for me to feel enough control I, where I enjoy watching a story that's that big unfold all by myself. Mm-hmm. So I think what I would really like to to enhance my personal experience of that game is to play with someone else. So you could be like, did you see what just happened? Like, I need, well, I think I need that you, for this to work for me. You have, if, you want, if you want that, you have to play with me. Although what I will say is what you get out of Nemo's War, I get out of El Tar. Yeah, that's fair. So just it just you know different different ways of delivering, but that's the same core experience that we're looking for. Yeah. So I'll just hard my number four. Nice, very nice. All right, number three. This was a tough, like you know, deciding oh, your top. It's tough. The, the summit of the mountain to finally get into that top is really no, tough. no. It's just like sort of a new a new entry, but I just think it's so brilliant. Gave it a ten out of ten this year, and it's too many bombs. That is such a good game. Mm-hmm. It's from Chip Theory. Um, I d- actually don't really recommend it. Um just so i think you need to play two characters yes. but i mean i think other people have different preferences but mm-hmm. too many bones is a dice builder rpg it's exactly what they tell you it is you go on an adventure with these creatures called gearlocks who uh have skill trees that you can build up and you can add dice that you could roll during battle um and they get really cool powers and really cool items there's a lot of neat stuff that you can do uh the enemies move in really interesting ways you do like a lot of tactical fighting on this little battle mat when it's time to fight um there is just so much variety in what can happen to you, how you can develop your characters, character combos that you can play, um, decisions you can make, you know, you can play a different big boss every time. It's just wild, like how much depth there is to this game. It does come at a bit of a cost, like some of the gear locks are difficult to learn how to play. Like stanza still throws me, honestly, sometimes. <laughs> like I do not play her often, awesomely, but um, right. You know, for me, a game that I can come back to and still have to learn so much, even though I know the basic mechanics of how to play, I, I really, really love it. Uh, I think it is just so ambitious design-wise too. Like one of the things I love about about Chip Theory in particular as a publisher is that they take advantage of the fact that they're a boutique publisher to do what they want and they do whatever they want and they take risks. And yeah. I think that Too Many Bones is a situation where it really pays off. Um, it is so deep. It is so interesting and no normal publisher would ever have published such a game. And I'm wild about it. If you want to go 
drop your entire tax refund on something <laughs> 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 then um i mean too many months is very expensive um but it's i mean to me it's been worth it i've, I've been getting the hours out so i played it uh because they sent me a copy like way or like a ding and dent type copy way early uh and it was it was good i i mean i think it wasn't what it is right yet yeah right and it, it, it needs a little bit more the galax needs a little bit more the rules clean up i had a real t- tough time with the yeah. initial set of the rules and this was when it was just uh josh and adam carlson uh which yeah. we have an interview i have an interview on shelf stories to tell the whole story about the origin of trip theory games please go chill into shelf stories uh <laughs> shelf stories <laughs> uh so then you know they've acquired more staff you know get that get those rules cleaned up you yep. know a new presentation uh, and, you know, more gear locks and more just, you know, different uh, things to do and revamp some of the event cards. And I just think it's, it, I need to play the, the, this, this kind of upgraded version. And yeah, I will it's, at some point. It is seriously grown as a system. Um, yeah, it's, it's really, really something to behold. And, mm-hmm. you know, I, I think that without that kind of creativity, our, our entire hobby would be missing something. Yeah. Yeah, thank you to Cephalofair. Thank you to Chip Theory. Thank you for these companies that are pushing boundaries. Yes. yes. Okay. Uh, my number three was your number six, Spirit Island. Ah, uh, very good. Yeah, so Spirit Island. Oh, please. Where, where is it? Oh, oh, wait a minute. It's upstairs. I'm playing the expansion, uh, Jagged Earth, right now. Nice. Be, uh, reviews coming in August for um, for all three. Uh, so we'll figure it out. So then, yeah, Spirit Island. Uh, same thing I said about Mage Knight, the puzzle to payoff ratio. Like you are puzzling through your hand. Uh, and you know, you have your, your small hand of cards, you begin with four and then you slowly acquire cards. Uh, and there's decisions, every single, every single thing is a decision and for good or ill, right? Some people just don't want that much decision space. Some things need to be easy, but this one just feels like, you know, every single one is like, even like acquiring a card. Like I got to get rid of a card if it's a major power card. I don't want, <laughs> I had a plan. <laughs> I don't want to get rid of a card. Uh, so then, you know, it's just, and so your, your hand slowly grows. And you're coordinating your cards and your player board. And your player board has innate powers too. So you got to like, you know, play symbols to light up your innate power. And then you, the board, like you can't just cast your cards anyway. You have to have quote unquote presence on the board. So you have to, so most of your cards key off of where your presence is. So like you have the perfect plan, but it's like, oh wait, I don't have presence there. Uh, uh. <laughs> and it kind of like rejigger, you have to rejigger your whole thing. And you know, so it's like, it's a low player count game. Uh, it does work at a higher player kind of as a cooperative game. Um, if everybody knows, they have to know. You have to know what you're doing. You know, the, <laughs> yeah. I think it's a game that where you need everybody needs to be at the same skill level. So like you can have a bunch of beginners, and you can have a bunch of advanced players. Getting that mix is going to be difficult unless the advanced player is patient. Yeah, right? just know that going in, uh, or they're teaching or they're, they're bringing people in. Yeah. Um, so it, it just and the so like the puzzle payoff ratio of the actual thing that's that's great. Uh, the theme, anti-colonization. People know my story. I'm, I'm, I'll, I'm just gonna say I am not with colonization games at all. Uh, the way they're done, like I think you could do it well, uh, but the way that current Euro game design does it, I just don't approve of a lot of the different um, colonization games. Controversial, but I have solutions. Go check my channel to see how I address this. And this is one of the solutions. You know, this, one of the solutions is to tell things from the opposite perspective. And you know, they, they you know, so. They, they made it spirits. It isn't necessarily like kind of oppressed peoples. Like there are Dehan, but the Dehan are very, in, they're, they're very incidental. Like they're not the, the main show. They're not the antagonist. The spirits yeah. are. Uh, but I love the flip in perspective. Uh, I love the, I just, there's so much, right? And the, the expansions are not necessary. I, no. branch, of, branch of Claw is kind of necessary because you get the event cards and it mixes yeah. up your play. Um, you know, if, you're, if you play more than like four times, I think you're gonna want the event cards to kind of mix things up. The 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 new the new expansion not quite necessary, but I think it adds a lot. I mean, if you play more, there's more for you. Uh, but the base game is enough, and just I man, Spirit Island, <laughs> number one game of all time. I'll take it. It's not my number one game, but you know, I, I understand exactly why people have voted it number one <laughs> twice in a row solo game of uh, all time. So. Nice. Yeah. I, um. I, I really do like Spirit Island. It's it's a really fantastic. I, I think my one complaint would be that it does bother me a little bit that the Dahan don't seem to have a lot of agency in their own land. But uh, other than I mean, you know, that's not going to stop me from having a darn good this time. This game doesn't need game. more decisions. This game does not need no, more things not. or more agency. It does not. <laughs> <laughs> Maxed out. <laughs> Maxed out. Absolutely. All right. So, All right, so 
for me, the big drama was, was my number two going to stay my number two? And it is. My number two is- uh, Can I guess? Can I guess? Yeah. Hoplomachus. It is. So I absolutely adore Hoplomachus. I've got everything- Two straight chip theory games. Love it. I mean, well, yeah. So my big drama this year was I played Too Many Bones and I was like, I really like this. Do I like it better than Hoplo? What if I like it better than Hoplo? What does this mean for my soul? No, not really. <laughs> <laughs> but, um, you know, so I actually think I do like it a little bit better than old Hoplo, but I've played Victorum. Oh my God. So mm. I um I almost never take Kickstarter previews anymore. Uh, I don't, I don't know. They're just not my thing. But I, I begged to do it for Hoplo because I just wanted to play Victorum that bad. And I did not think I could survive not knowing. Mm. <laughs> And I'm so glad I did because it's amazing. It, it takes everything. So basically, Hoplo as a system, I really just adore. It's got great AI. I really like all the different, um, you know, factions, and I love all the tactical aspects that go into fighting and complete the challenges and something like Origins. Um, and now, in its new incarnation, I think it's going to be even tighter and better. It's going to be combining all the things I like into a system where it all works even better together than it did before. And yeah, I it's just I love that game. I love it in all of its shapes and forms, um, but it continues to improve. And that just, mm, that warms my heart. <laughs> Never played it. Missing out. So good. I know. I know. We can have a, <laughs> if you, if you want to play the old one, waiting for the new one, we can have like a Rome versus Carthage showdown or something. I will wait for the new one. <laughs> I don't need to go back. <laughs> all right. So should I talk about my number two now? Or should I talk about my number one, which everybody knows now? And then, um, and then save the number two for like the surprise at the end. Ooh, well, everybody owns my number one as well. So okay. doesn't, right. there's no surprises. There's no surprise. But, All right. Okay, your number Although, two. Uh, my number are you two... going to give any clues? <laughs> I was trying to see if I should guess. <laughs> I will, yes, I will allow you to give, I will allow you to give me a clue. In fact, that's the only thing I'm going to allow you to do in this game. No, no, no. oh, you're allowing me to give you a clue. We, give, we, we will give each other clues. So I'm giving you the clue that you have to give me a clue. Uh, <laughs> giving you know, a clue remember, is a... Well, we were talking before, and you said that you weren't sure that people wouldn't be mad at you because it might not even count as a game. And that tells me that it's the mind. Okay. I, it's, no, not quite. I think it's... No? Um, it's a device. I, I meant that it's a divisive game. It's like it's a game that people that makes people really mad, but it's a real game. Um, one of the core actions is give a clue. Uh, the crew. Very pretty close. We're in the we're in the realm. <laughs> the the crew, yeah. <laughs> Cooperative card game. Yeah, I don't know, man. Hanabi. Hanabi. Oh, I never played Hanabi. What? I know. What? I never played it. <laughs> oh my god. We, okay, top of the list. We are playing Hanabi. You're going to show me baseball highlights. I'm going to show you Hanabi. Hanabi is amazing. I only have two games rated 10 out of 10. This is the first one. Hanabi is a 10 out of 10 game for me. I have played over 6,000 games in my life at this point. Are you serious? Board Game Arena, baby. Board Game Arena. I just, I log on and it's the one, for the long time, it was the the only cooperative game on Board Game Arena. So then it takes seven minutes to play, seven to 10 minutes. And, you know, between sessions, I, I, I want to do something. I log on and play. And it's just, right, I've been doing it for- 6,000? I've been doing it for about five years. <laughs> okay. Well, let's, just, let's say so they're all seven minutes. That's 42,000 minutes of your life. Yes. Let's by the way, that's 700 hours, 700 plus hours of Hanabi. I approve. <laughs> <laughs> it's like a week. It's like a week of just uh, wake up and go to bed. <laughs> I think it's more than a week, my man. <laughs> <laughs> I mean, okay. So Hanabi, people don't know, which which you don't know. Yeah, it's like apparently. four weeks. You've spent a month yeah. of your life playing Hanabi or more. So Hanabi, it's a very simple card game. You hold your cards out, kind of Indian poker style. Uh, and so you don't see your cards. You see everybody else's cards, but not your own. And you give a clue, which is the whole thing. Uh, the, the clues you give are like, you can give the color or the number as a clue. And you're trying to get the player to play in a, into a central tableau. You have to play um, in sequential order. So like you play, play one through one through five in different colors. So then, and, and the, the card happens one at a time. And if you mess up, you get a bomb, you get three bombs, you're done. So, you know, you get a clue and it's like, okay, I, I'm gonna, this card is a three. And then you gotta figure out what in the hell is he talking about? 
<laughs> what does he want? Does he want me to play that? Or does <laughs> he want me to save it? Or is he just telling me just because he has no idea? And <laughs> so you got to figure out why am I giving you this clue? Like, why am I giving you the clue? And <laughs> so, you know, you get, that's the, that's the entry level game. So like the entry level game, it's, it's fun because, you know, we, you got to figure each other out. Uh, and which is the, the, the draw of like the games, like the mind and the crew, you have to kind of re you know, figure out how your opponent plays. You get to an advanced mode and then there's like conventions that settle in where it's like, okay, if I give you a number clue where the card is here, that means save it. If I give you a color clue, that means play it. If I give you, you know, if, I, if I'm, if I'm cluing your newest card, that means you probably want to play it. That, you know, they, there's conventions that kind of settle in, which makes the base game really easy, but you add the expansion, which is the multicolor cards or you add like the special expansions like black cards and all these different things. Now you need the, the now you need the convention to do anything. Ooh. And I just love, <laughs> I still lose, I still lose plenty. You know, I've had, I've, I've had plenty of games like even with a convention, like, you know, we're still, we're just not connecting and, it's, yeah. and we just bomb out. And that's great that you want that, that you don't want to just make things be <laughs> really easy. And it's just my comfort. It's, it, it, I, I've talked about comfort food games a lot. That's my comfort food game, no question. I'll play nice. it anytime. 10 out of 10. Awesome. 10 out of 10. One day I'll try it. I cannot believe, no wonder you didn't guess. I can't believe you haven't played it. Uh, I mean, <laughs> when am I going to play two player games, man? Like, I, there's some. True. But... <laughs> true. Okay. We could try it on Board Game Arena. Mm -hmm. I've, I've, yeah. I've, learned, I've learned how to use some board game technology this year out of necessity. So. Well, that is true. We could, uh, we could probably, I could probably teach you Hanabi on Board Game Arena and we could have a, a really great time uh, talking about it. <laughs> All right, so my number one, Grand Mystery. It's Mage Knight. Obviously, it doesn't get any better than Mage Knight. I'm sorry. Like, those of you who disagree, you are just not getting enough out of this game. Um, <laughs> no, I love Mage Knight. Um, I wish that there would be more for it because I just never get tired of it. But there's something about the rush of, like, starting as very powerful, but not as powerful as you're going to be. And then choosing how you want to level up and what kinds of you know artifacts and spells and different things you want to kind of take in to yourself how you want to use your cards do i want to burn down this monastery or do i want to just like be nice to them and and hire people um you know there's just so much to do it's just a really oh man i never get tired of it there's something about the particular satisfaction i get from growing my mage knights in this particular game that just nothing beats that feeling like even though it's familiar by now um it has a specific just itch that it scratches i guess that nothing else can and i love it I actually though i'm different from you so you got the ultimate edition i actually kept my old edition and just got like the card mm -hmm. pack because i can fit it all in that one little box like i've got my own little storage i'm regretting the big edition that they, that's it's too big <laughs> I, know, had, I had all the stuff for the small pack. I think I found, although I got the big edition as a gift. So thank yeah, you. Yeah, but like, it's still I mean, there. I swear, people, it's still there. Mage Knight is my most like, you know, I, I, I've sleeved every card. I got all the little deck boxes to organize things according to my preferences. I have little tackle boxes in there to like put all my tokens where I want them. Like, it is the most optimized game storage that I have because it is the game that I care the most about if that makes sense. Yeah. It is like, you can tell, like if you open the box, like, wow, this person really loves this game <laughs> because like the rule books are all beat up and you know, it's just, oh man, if I had more time, I would play more Mage Knight. I wish I did because I just really, really, really like it. The only thing wrong with it is it's long. Yeah. So I, I, speaking of what you said, I, I hadn't really thought about this before, but like you can play this game 25 times and have 25 pretty different character layouts. Yeah. Even you know, if like, you're playing the same Mage Knight, you could. you're playing the same Mage Knight, which they, they lean. So like if you're playing Nora Wash, you get like they, they have benefits to influence to more followers. Yeah. If you're playing um, Gold X, you know, they, there's a certain layout for them. And then if you're playing, um, Jesus, I, I'm forgetting the characters already. <laughs> Arathrea or something. Arathrea, Tovac. Yeah. Oh yeah. yeah. Yeah, you can tune your build to that person. But then even within that, because there's so many cards and you can play yeah. advanced tactics. You can play a spell game. So like you yep. can optimize for spells. Uh, you can play a, um, the, one of the, one of the scenarios I like is called dungeon Lords where you don't, there are no um, followers at all. Yeah. And you can play just off of, you know, powers and artifact stuff. And that's a completely different scenario. Yeah. You know, and basically it's all about 
making the right decisions about what cards to pull in and then making the right decisions about what to do with what's in your hand. And for me though, like I love card games. And I think that interestingly for a game that takes up such so much space and is such a table hog, really at its very heart, like Mage Knight is a card game where you are acquiring yeah. the right hand. And that never gets old for me. I like, I mean, you might've noticed like two of my top games are deck builders, Spirit Island in its way has like hand building, yep. Sentinels and Multiverse is a deck yep. game. Um, you and know, even still a co's got a lot highlights. of hard play. Yep. There's a there's a theme for me. <laughs> yeah. That that's where we match up. Honestly, that's where we match up. Like in terms of we love solo and we love like clever card play, Pax Mirror, like all yeah. the games. You know, yeah. and, and uh, many of my games also have card play. Ghost Warriors has no card play, but the but the enemy is cards. So that feels, you know, it's kind of in that you know, in that realm. So yeah. lots of cards. Uh, so, you know, my number one game, no secret, Pandemic, uh, just basic Pandemic, you know, I, the Pandemic Legacy, which is amazing, and the different historical Pandemics, which are amazing, uh, and, you know, Dice Game and, you know, different iterations of it, but just give me Pandemic, right? Uh, I can still play a game of Pandemic, just normal, no expansions, basic characters, like the, the, 10th, the, the 10th anniversary was like a big to-do production, but it only had basic stuff. I don't have that because it's too expensive. I don't need it, but my store has it. And so it's like, I had a uh, new, new players. Well, I don't know what I want to play. How about some pandemic? And I played a basic game with some newer players and I had a blast. I just, I love being in the system. It's so, it, it's, it's so simple, so clean. Every, it, it gives me the sense of like, just a really tight, you pull this lever and then five things just kind of like react to it so like yeah. you know i i go here and the the whole geometry of the board is changing and it's like okay now it's like i'm here for this explosion and i'm here to trade this card for that card and i'm here in case i want to fire off this event this event works differently if i'm here than if i'm here <sighs> ah! <laughs> it doesn't tickle me as much as like a quirky circuit so like it doesn't kind of give me the that like ugu gaga but like i just I don't know, like it, it's almost like, and this is gonna sound really dorky. It's gonna sound so bad, but I don't care. Okay, I'm, you. I'm with you. When I, con Pandemic is a game I contemplate. Mm -hmm. It is not a game, I, it, there's a lot of games I enjoy. Pandemic is a game I contemplate. Like, I, I, like, like you walk into like a, one of those old school cathedrals. Like, yeah. I, like I've been to Vatican City and I've been to, you know, these different areas, like, you know, the Church of Notre Dame and all these different places. And you walk in and it's like, <laughs> there's no words. I, I'm, I'm, I'm blown away, not just by the aesthetic, but like how it all works together. I get that same feeling from Pandemic. It is the only game that I own that I contemplate. It is so beautiful. And see it's like- I'm about to cry. Do it, do oh it. Oh my God. <laughs> but I, I will confess that Pandemic is one of those games that I would not miss it if I never saw it again, but it's fine. But I, I think that that's like, I mean, art's like that too, though. You know what I mean? Right, like right. there are things that get you revved up that leave somebody else cold all the time. And there's just no accounting for it. It's just, everybody's built just a little bit different. Art. It's art. Does yeah. it stop me from playing Pandemic though when it's available? Yeah. No, happy play. Yeah, like when I, I went respect Vatican it very much as a system. Yeah. When I went to Vatican City, like there were people that were just kind of like eating ham sandwiches and like, you know, farting around, like doing nothing. And I'm sitting there having like this experience. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. yeah. On that, on that, we, we overlap. <laughs> right. So yeah. And it was my second game ever. It was my second hobby game ever. Yeah. Uh, and just, I don't know. It's just, I don't know. I love it. Pandemic. Uh, I, I just can't foresee another game. And Sleeping Gods is like, you know, a game, a newer game that kind of gave me like really right. deep feels. Spirit Island is a game that gives me some really deep feels because of the, what's happening. Just that extra level of just contemplation of a simple system and how much can be layered on that system in terms of the theme and different experiences. Right, you know, uh, Fall of Rome was like a, like a quasi war game. Had those, yeah. uh, had those things, we, we reviewed it together. Uh, it just, I don't know, I, it's just, Pandemic, I love it. I'll never, it'll, I, I can't imagine it'll ever move from my number one. So, yeah, and that, and there we go. That is how we're gonna end. We are gonna end with a tear in Jason's eye. <laughs> we, we're gonna end with a, a a monstrous, powerful hand of cards in Liz's hand as she as she prepares <laughs> to conquer the universe. <laughs> yes. <laughs> and that is how we are going to end our Semper Ludimus top fifty fifty. Those that is our entire list. Uh, please, uh, you know. 
Tell us what you think in the comments. Tell us what you think. I mean, you're going to tell us anyway um, <laughs> about what you think about apps, what you think about cards, what you think about solo, a lot of solo here, what you think about, you know, the interaction of solo multiplayer. Well, tell us what you think about history, a lot of history uh, represented here. Tell us what you think about war games, which our Liz would love to talk about. Um, would love Seriously, like, they, like that is not a, a, re a represented thing in this section of the hobby, like in terms of the Dice Tower audience, you know, bring you're bringing new stuff. To us, please, you know, if you enjoy a war game because Liz mentioned it, please mention it. I'm sure she would get a real kick out of it. So, on behalf of me, Jason from Child Stories, and on behalf of Liz Davison, I will encourage everybody to send prayer ludimus, which means we always play. So, ludite omnis. Later, everybody. <laughs>